Hello. Today we begin the actual reading of selections from William Bradford's history of Plymouth Plantation. I'm going to read selections from selections. I'm not going to read the whole book. Uh, but I am going to read today from part of book one, chapter one, where he says this. When as by the travail and diligence of some godly and zealous preachers, and God's blessing on their labors, as in other places of the land, so in the north parts, many became enlightened by the word of God, and had their ignorance and sins discovered unto them, and began by his grace to reform their lives, and make conscience of their ways. The work of God was no sooner manifest in them, but presently, they were both scoffed and scorned by the profane multitude, and the ministers urged with the yoke of subscription, or else must be silenced. And the poor people were so vexed with apparators and pursuants and the commissary courts, as truly their affliction was not small, which, notwithstanding, they bore sundry years with much patience, so they were occasioned by the continuance and increase of these troubles and other means which the Lord raised up in those days to see further into things by the light of the word of God. That was one sentence. This is going to be long. Its language is going to be involved. And I'm going to stop from time to time to say occasionally what the point of that was. What this was about was to say that there were preachers abroad in England who were preaching things that were contrary to the practice advocated by the established Church of England. And when they started doing things in the parish churches that were contrary to the Book of Common Prayer, um, Archbishop Laud, who was in charge of maintaining order within the church and was big on order, um, managed to bring the civil authorities into things. And uh, people were being asked to sign on, people meaning the clergy here, uh, they were being asked to sign on and say, I will only use these forms of prayer. I will only use this translation of the Bible, I will, and so forth and so on. And um, a bunch of people who would not, as they say here, uh, subscribe, sign on, uh, were said, were deprived of, of their living, as it was said, meaning that they were kicked out of their job. And uh, people who would uh, agree agree to the, the procedures were put in. Uh, and as a result of that, we're hearing about what it looked like from the people that agreed with the, the uh, they used a lot of different terms for it, but the, the um, people who would uh, object, let's call them the objectors at this point. Um, anyway, that was one sentence. Let me read the next sentence. How not only these base and beggarly ceremonies were unlawful, meaning things like um, crossing, putting a cross on a child's forehead with water when uh, the child is baptized, or um, asking people to kneel at communion. Um, these things that they thought were remnants of the Middle Ages of Roman Catholicism that needed to be removed. Um, having too many candles on the altar, speaking of it as an altar instead of as a communion table. Um, speaking of a church instead of a church building or a meeting house for the church. Um, I, I'm not going to get started. 
let me just read what he had to say. Um, Notwithstanding, they bore sundry years with much patience. Um, how not only these base and beggarly ceremonies were unlawful, but also that the lordly and tyrannous power of the prelates ought not to be submitted unto, which thus, contrary to the freedom of the gospel, would load and burden men's consciences, and by their compulsive power make a profane mixture of persons and things in the worship of God, and that their offices and callings, courts and canons, etc., were unlawful and anti-Christian, being such as have no warrant in the word of God, but the same that were used in popery and still maintained, of which a famous author thus writeth in his Dutch con commentaries. At the coming of King James into England, the new king, saith he, found there established the Reformed religion, according to the Reformed religion of King Edward VI, retaining or keeping still the spiritual state of the bishops, etc., after the old manner, much varying and differing from the Reformed churches in Scotland, France, and the Netherlands, Emden, Geneva, and so forth, whose reformation is cut or shaped much nearer the first Christian churches as it was used in the apostles' time. So they're objecting that uh, King James didn't do enough to follow the example of John Calvin and his followers on the continent. So many, therefore, of these professors, as saw the evil of these things in these parts of anti-Christian bondage, and as the Lord's free people joined themselves by a covenant of the Lord into a church estate in the fellowship of the gospel to walk in all his ways, made known or to be made known unto them according to their best endeavors, Whatsoever it should cost them, the Lord assisting them. And that it cost them something, this ensuing history will declare. That's one paragraph, which is why we're only reading selections from this. We're going to pick it up tomorrow and hear what happened when a small exemplary group of this larger group of people joined themselves in a covenant to follow the Lord's directions. I'll see you then.